something cool online here with Swayda. How you doing, man? Good, thank you, mate. Yeah. Very good. You want to introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Davey, uh, play guitar and sing on the Suede Ed. And we're sitting here in Buffalo, New cool. York. I understand uh, most people might know you from your band Beat Union, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, I was, uh, it's the same kind of thing really. I've always been uh, a front man, sort of singer, songwriter, right. front man, guitarist, singer. And, uh, uh, did that whole thing with Beat Union for a few years, and we did. I think it was 2007. We signed a deal out here. Okay. And we spent all of 2008 touring, and then I think it was a, somewhere in early 2009 we broke up, and I ended up staying out here. Okay. Um, by book or by crook, didn't didn't want to go home. <laughs> And uh, somehow, so far, it's working. I don't know how, but it's working so far. And uh, Suede is the new, the new project. Now, I understand. Originally, it was more of a side project for you guys. Is that right? Yeah, it was. Um, it was weird, really. I was. I guess bands sort of come and go, and, and you know, if you're a musician or a writer or an artist. You're always going to have this like creative output, you know what I mean? So I was just, um, I was just sort of working, taking things day by day. Didn't really know, you know, the one the, the one band that had ended. I didn't know what the next band was going to be, but I carried on writing, and I always kind of, I always like to dabble like with soul music. I always love listening to soul and Motown, right. and soul, and. Uh, Always said in, in Beat Union, I was always like, I don't think all the others were really that up for it, but I always used to say, like, man, if we end up making a few records, you know, if we yeah. make a third or fourth record, you know, I was like, I want to go soul on the try, just like, right. just bring a soul influence in, bring some horns and some keys and stuff, and just see what we can do. So I always had that interest, excuse me. And yeah, it was, um, I just started doing that, just demoing on my own. I'd, I'd play a little bit of every instrument, and when I write a song, I kind of, I know kind of what I want, how I want things to be arranged and put together. Right. So I just started demoing, and um, I made really rough, terrible, like, shitty sounding, uh -huh. but kind of just, cool. Just, and yeah, right, a little raw. They had some character to them, yeah. you know, and, and I always loved that. And then, I don't know, people were liking them. So One of those like, people that liked them was Mike Tass, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, Lucky for us, because yeah, it's, it's a funny thing. We probably wouldn't have formed if it wasn't for Mike liking it. And I, uh, I work in the uh, Hurley recording studio okay. in Orange County, California. Uh, so I run that whole that whole studio for, for Hurley. We have a lot of acts coming in, um, and Social D. Right. We're doing some some writing and some demoing for their latest record. Okay. Um, Hard rhymes and nursery rhymes, hard times and nursery rhymes. Right. So they were demoing for that, doing all the writing process, and uh, and I just got chatting to Mike one day, and he was just like, you know, he he heard that I was writing and doing stuff, and he just been playing some of his stuff, and he he was really into it, and he was he was like, man, when you you know when you get something together, like let me know, like you should come out and play some shows. I'm really into this stuff, and I just thought like, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah exactly. You play, you play all the time with bands, and it's just like, yeah, good job, man. Like, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Great job, yeah. you guys, or like, whatever. Like, uh -huh. You know, I just thought I didn't expect that to be real. You know what I mean? And then eventually we kind of we got the call, and I was just like, okay, a show in what three weeks? I was just like, uh, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, definitely. I don't know how yet, but I'll do it. Yeah, like, for sure. Sure. And then just we, we got the band together, and we kind of. You know, I've met I've met Corey a long time ago on Warp Tour, right. I knew Chris, and we we kind of jammed a few times, but we just weren't a solid band. And then it was time to just you know yeah get it together and do it. You know that's cool. Yeah. Now, tell me about the commitments. <laughs> the commitments, I uh, the commitments was a really important, impactful film on my life. It's it's funny when you when you're growing up as a kid you 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 know you're so impressionable and you don't always know like you know the music that you get that your parents play you as a kid or the right. films that you end up seeing you don't realize as a kid how much that stuff 
is going to affect you, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's probably why parents and, you know, have so many people like, rules on, you know, what they'll expose their kids to. And it's like, it, I suppose that stuff is important, but but one of the, one of the early films I got really into was The Commitments, which was uh, at the time an independent Irish film about a working class soul band from Dublin in the late 80s. I think the film came out in 90 and it was from the late 80s. And uh, it just really spoke to me, man. I wasn't yet playing music, but I was obsessed with right. records and stuff. And, um, you know, it, it was, you know, fairly situation fairly close to home that you know it was it, you know it wasn't a big Hollywood film or anything like that. Right. I really, I really related to it and I yeah I, exactly. it, it gave me my first insight into like band politics and, and soul music and you know and something that I could relate to and I used to I taped it off off uh, off a friend on an old like VHS tape and okay. I watch it religiously every day after, really? after school. Yeah. And I still do. Right. I still watch it. I watched it a few weeks ago. Like. Yeah, it's bring back all the old feelings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah. Tell me about International Soul Rebel Society. International Soul Rebel Society. That is that's basically our record label. Okay. I, I don't know. You, I guess you could call it our label, our, our branding, mm-hmm. our fan club, or whatever you know. Um, but basically, we just. We just wanted to do everything ourselves, and we just thought, you know, since uh, since all of our old bands broke up, and particularly mine, you know, I had a really great time with my old band, but it was kind of done in the way it was working was, I think it was it was the, the it was the, 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 the production model of the band and how we how we were working was kind of. In that old phase of the of the music industry, and how things were working out, you know, just on the turn of like not the internet revolution, but how much like YouTube and iTunes really has come into play now, you know. Right. Um, you know, we we had like a British manager, an American manager, record label, producer, agent, all this stuff in place, and the way it was working, when it came to an end, I kind of didn't know exactly what to do. Like, I've always come from a punk rock sort of DIY background, mm-hmm. but I've been I've been doing that for a couple of years. So I was kind of like, oh man, like, what am I? How am I supposed to do this now? Do you know what I mean? Like, right. You know how do I? It's getting harder and harder to have, to try and have a label like put some money into you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and or have a producer or do, have any of these people like pump money into something that they don't know what they're getting. And uh, it was just kind of like, Matt, why bother? It's, it's like, yeah, it's exactly. 2011, mm-hmm. like, nobody is going to back this thing if we're not backing it ourselves. For sure. Right? So we're just like, we're just like, let's just start releasing, start releasing music, you know what I mean? Let's, let's start, start releasing vinyl, like, I produce and record, and okay. started, so we're just being DIY, recording it ourselves, making like, videos, and that's going to be a little bit better. I mean, yeah, well, you guys got to have your own creative ideas and how you want to do things. You don't have someone pushing you to go a certain way when you guys are doing it all on your own. Yeah, it's um, it's definitely right for us. We're like, we're all creative people. Me and me and Chris take care of more of the label side of things. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I'll uh, I'll do the songwriting. I then get to choose how it is produced and how it's going to sound. Mm-hmm. Um, Chris is a graphics guy, great graphic designer and artist, so we talk about the whole visual aspect and then we just, we, we, I don't know, there was never any point where we were like, oh, how should this cover look or how should this video look? We're just like really creative right. people that have always got an idea and uh, we like to think we have a kind of a fairly good sense of style and, and good eye for that stuff. So we. We know exactly what we want, and we, we keep talking about it. We're like, man, if, if another label was to like pipe in at some point and do something, we're like, man, we really, we like, we'd have a hard time letting go of the reins. Right, you know right, I mean? so, for sure. I mean, hopefully that's not going to happen. You know, I mean, in this day and age, I think we can we can drive this ship ourselves, and you know. Any other acts going to be signed to that label? Not yet. 
Have them maybe in the future? Maybe. You haven't really thought about it too much. Right now, just focus um, on your own stuff. Yeah, it's keeping us that busy with, with like, you know, we, we still all work day jobs at the moment, you know? Right. And, uh, and that's the way we like it. We like to stay busy. And this is like an evening thing. Um, you know, often into the, uh, often going into the next morning as well. You know, we oh, yeah. don't uh-huh. get much sleep. If you want to, if you want to do something and make progress, you've got to put a lot of time and work into it. So, I don't know. At the moment, yeah, it's filling up our days and our nights and our weekends and every spare minute we've got working on our band. So maybe when the time's right, who knows? Maybe I'll, I'll see a band and be like, you know what? Like we we built Suede and ISRS to a big enough level, level where we could maybe Start use it as a, as a platform for, mm-hmm. a, for an unknown band and you know I essentially you know I produce bands and record bands so right it's it's always it's always a possibility now you guys definitely been busy you did three EPs this year is that correct a lot of work right there yeah yeah, yeah. For sure um, fortunately a lot of the songs were written pretty much prior to it okay um, but yeah, just uh, like I say, man, just just putting the time in. It's all it's all about um, devotion and hard work and just uh, you know I can't even sell it as that too much because we're not like we're not big parties. It's what like we like being creative. Right. We love, we love doing this. So yeah. it's like it's not like I, I don't want to go out drinking. You know what I mean? Right. I've, yeah. I've, 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 you don't want to follow, but, yeah. You don't want to follow the rockstar lifestyle. You yeah. guys are, you know, focused more on putting out something better the next day instead of you know getting fucked up on it. Yeah, <laughs> and we've, you know, I've kind of, I've done that when I was younger, and you know, I'm very clear about music is what I love and right. what I want to dedicate my life to. So it's about, it's about devoting your life to it and doing it in your spare time. You know, doing it any time you can. Who's the girl on the uh, on the covers? I, I noticed, it's, you know, same chick each time. Yeah, that's yeah. That's, uh, that's a friend of mine, uh, Caroline Ryder. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. She's actually we met in in Los Angeles All right. um, through mutual friends. Um, but she's actually from London, and she lives and works out here. So we kind of. We got introduced. Oh, you're both English. Like you two should know each other. Uh-huh. So uh, yeah, we always kept in touch, and um, she actually did. Uh, she's a writer, and she did a feature on Suede early on, and then okay. we were looking for just trying to rack our brains like, and find, you know, a uh, we wanted a, a pretty English rose, I suppose. I should right. say, you know. Uh-huh. And she's like, actually, my friend Caroline. Yeah, friend of the girl, uh-huh. she's in the part, and she is, she is British. She's got that, that skin tone, you know, kind of what we're looking for. So right. She just, just called her up, and she done a little bit of my looking for, and I was just like, hey, do, you, do you fancy doing it? And she was down. So that's cool. Yeah, that's really cool. So um, this month, you guys put a track on the Hurley download card. What up? That's cool. Yeah. That's um, that's. I mean, that's a large part of of my job. Uh, Hurley, I put that or helped put that whole download card together. Wouldn't that, yeah, it doesn't hurt putting your own guys, you know, putting your own stuff on. Yeah, I was going to say, I didn't put the whole thing together. It's myself and uh, Greg Teal. Um, and yeah, we, we both worked on it, put it together, and it wasn't even me pushing it, it was it was Greg, my boss, and it was just like, we should put some weight in it. Let's, let's do it, and I'm like, yeah, it, was, it, it was my error. So yeah. I wasn't there, like, come on. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, but yeah, we uh, we sorted that out. All the bands have been recorded in the Hurley recording studio, and yeah, we basically um, we just we put that download card into production, and it's gone out. I think it was about twelve thousand, maybe fifteen thousand, and it goes out in Hurley stores when okay. you buy when you buy an item of clothing. You get the free download oh, cool. compilation. There's like twelve tracks on there. And it's uh, especially now Christmas time. It's definitely gonna hurt. Get yeah, that out, you know what I mean. Get that out there for the fans. Yeah, get a free sampler with your with your clothing. Yeah, cool. So you guys are gonna be touring through December now, right? Into December, not through. We've got. A, I think we finish about the seventh early, of December. Early December. Yeah, and then um, I'm gonna be working in the studio with. Um, Anthony from Vancouver Bayside is doing some solo stuff, so okay. I'm working with him. 
Um, so I'm kind of busy up till Christmas and we get back I'll start that record start working on that record and we got one or two gigs in we got one in Anaheim with Sugar Cult. Alright. Which is the anniversary of their first record, that's gonna be a good one. And then we're playing in uh, Club Underground which is like a, a very long mud club in LA. So just a just a couple of one offs. So what's next for you guys after that then? Um well that takes us up till Christmas. Over Christmas we are working we're gonna be tracking over Christmas uh, a couple of cover songs. Okay. Um, we don't know completely how it's going to go down yet, so I can't say too much. But uh, yeah, there'll be a couple of cover songs out there sometime in the new year. That we cool. just we just want to track them for fun. Right. Don't know if they'll work their way into the live show or not, but we want to get an idea. I'll see what goes from there. Yeah, we've we've already started tracking the drums. They're sounding really good. We played one of the songs live before. Um, but I'm going to keep everything on the wraps. Right. So, uh, yeah, just look out for that couple of covers and then more music next year. Where can fans get the music? Do more about the band, the tour dates, and stuff like that? Uh, basically, our home base is swayheadband.com. You can find every, anything on there. Okay. Um, obviously, there'll be links to YouTube and Facebook and all that jazz. Oh, okay. Um, but swayheadband.com is the, is the place. Um, and that can direct you to all the tunes you can rock the music from there. Great, man. Cool. Yeah. Looking more to uh, the years to come, seeing what's going to, you know, I'm pretty sure you guys are going to take out pretty well. I like what I hear today. So it was, Thank uh, you, man. It was great, man. Thank you very much. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me. I appreciate it, man. Thanks, man.